Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist with an alternative interdimensional review of Cliff. He's a shockingly small red car, and I do mean shockingly small. When I first pulled this guy out of the box, I was actually starting to regret spending the 50 bucks because I was like, I cannot believe it is this small. However, a lot of bits of fit and finish just in the vehicle mode helped lessen my worry. Uh, having all four doors open to reveal a fairly nicely done interior is one big part that helps. Uh, the opening hood is more so for the transformation, but hey, you know, it's got an engine block inside, and it's a pretty tiny car to be able to do that. Uh, the opening trunk, I think, is what really sealed it for me. I'm not sure why opening trunks on Transformers always excite me, but they do. And uh, his his head, although you can see Cliff's head in there, the face is actually pretty well hidden by this little panel that took me a long time to realize it actually did that, because this guy's transformation, a lot of components of it scream subtlety. Um, also, the metallic red paint makes this guy the best-looking alternative I have laid my eyes on thus far, and I've seen a lot of them. And his vehicle mode is so solid uh, that he really has no trouble doing what a vehicle mode needs to do. Um, the rubber tires, there were no issues with having to swap the sides, like with the Prime. There was just a lot of impressive fit and finish on this guy. But really, the the part that I, I was tactilely intrigued with was the transformation. I hate to say it, but you really need to get your hands on this toy to fully appreciate the transformation. By the way, this little flap is very important, as it unlocks Cliff's main spinal automorph. The subtleties of Cliff's transformation actually make the instructions somewhat hard to use at times, but they also add a lot of personality to the design. Little things like this interlocking leg automorph flesh out a lot of the steps. His spine-sliding chest collapse is a remarkable piece of engineering, but is also a little bit frightening to do at first. A lot of small plastic joints move in tandem, and Cliff often needs to be oriented a certain way to prevent inner flaps from knocking things off track. Once you have his knees aligned, the rest of the transformation is fairly straightforward. Like other alternative transformations, there is a mixture of intricate alternator engineering and sturdy mainline engineering. Oh, and raising the shoulder joints here makes it a lot easier to lock down Cliff's pleasant little backpack. The final step involves unfolding Cliff's horns, and honestly, it feels like a wasted bit of engineering. They barely move either way, and I don't think there would have been clearance issues to leave them as a solid piece. And when you're done, you've got Alternate Cliff's robot mode, which at first I hated. And again, I hate saying it, but when you see this in person, it doesn't look quite as bad. Uh, the thing that really helps is when you realize that this hood is really just a bit of crotch armor, and that his chest ends here. So he does have a bit of a sticky outy chest, but it's mostly just because his legs are a bit thin that it seems to make him look like he's got a beer gut. Really, he's decently proportioned, and that surprised me, and also helped me really fall in love with this toy. His posability is quite solid, if a little limited. Again, like most alternatives, he has no waist joint, and I really feel there's no excuse for that on this design. But his ball-jointed head is quite free-moving, and uh, his arms, they're posable, but it's a little bit tough to move them. And uh, they can't really do too much in terms of crossing in front of his chest because his chest is so huge. His hips, though, are dead, dead solid. Although one important thing is this is the knee joint. This part is a multi-jointed little assembly that needs to stay locked in place. On the bright side, if you knock any part of this out of place, it'll be so loose and floppy you'll tell immediately. So it's a smart bit of engineering, if a little bit confusing at first, which is really just what I have to say about a lot of things involving this toy. Um, also, he's got... Oddly enough, ratchets in his thigh swivel and even heavier, dead solid ratchets in his hips forward and backward movement. Now, this was a bit annoying, but I realized that in doing so, those huge heavy ratchets allow this toy to remain standing solidly because he does have a lot of weight up there. There's a lot of die cast actually in this framework up here. Very subtle die cast, and it doesn't get in the way, which is exactly how I like my zinc. This was a really smart design, actually. The hips are poseable once you get over how much force you need to apply, but um, overall, this guy is kind of like, he is a toy you want to treat with kid gloves, and you have to get rough when you're playing with your cliff.
His weapons are rather cleverly stored on the inside of his shins. They're just these little uh, fold-out pistols, which no doubt can shoot mathematics to identify the weak point of Hytherion. I really like these because... I feel they're suitable to Cliff, especially Alternity Cliff. Um, this toy, by the way, I bought because, oddly enough, I love the character. I read his bio translation, and this is the first Alternity character where I would actually want to watch a show with this guy in it, because I love how he's just not about the interdimensional claptrap at all. He's still Cliff Jumper. He's like, you know what, I'll shoot math at Hytherion, and I'll help you guys out, but... Uh, you know, I want to keep my glass gas, and don't you dare put me into one of those multidimensional alternative bodies, or I'll, I'll kick a rock at you. So, that combined with his grim, kind of uncaring expression on the head sculpt, really, I am in love with this toy and this character. And he's at a high point for me in the alternative line, because even though he's a bit of an experimental design compared to the other two, I feel like he's more solidly thought out. And really, with Bumblebee, you know, he's Bumblebee, but I think that Cliff hits this mold a bit better. The metallic red is more interesting to me than that kind of flat yellow. His grim face, along with these pistols, makes him a little bit, uh, a little bit more characterful in his posing. He doesn't really look like he's having fun doing what he's doing, but he's still going to do it anyway, because, you know, damn it, it's his job. And he's got to show these alternative hoo-ha clowns how to get it done. So I am really enjoying Cliff, and I would recommend him, uh, especially if you're on the fence, because I was on the fence, and I'm very happy I jumped over that fence. Uh, by the way, in his legs, there's also this really weird ankle joint, which at first looks completely useless, but it's actually quite useful because his heels are kind of rounded nubs. So the balance of this toy actually works quite well with this design, and again... Uh, it looks like he doesn't do much when you look at pictures of him just standing still, but then when you get one in hand and you mess with him for a while, you realize this is actually quite a robust piece of robot engineering. So at the end of the day, I think that Alternative Cliff is a real big winner. And like I said, it also helps that I am I am just totally into this guy's character. I mean, like, I just imagine him chilling out at the Alternity home base... Because, you know, he just he just goes out when he needs to go shoot math at Hytherion. And then, uh, you know, you get all these jokers, other interdimensional robots coming by. And uh, you can just imagine the kind of scenarios that happen. Hail, interdimensional warrior of the Alternity! I am the master of the Ghetto Rays! Me and my friends... <laughs> ...wondered if you'd like to come and throw some dystopian alternate realities at each other for fun! Meh. Overall, I would highly recommend Alternative Cliff. He's everything I want out of an Alternity, especially in terms of surprising me when I thought so little of him at first. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelus. I hope this review has been helpful to you in some fashion. And as I said, you know, I know a lot of you probably don't care for his big chest, but let me tell you, if one man in this cosmos, in this multiverse, can rock a chest like this, it, it, ain't, it ain't no Bumble. It ain't no little yellow dude. It's Cliff. Because Cliff don't got time for none of you! In fact, he's sick of sticking around here with all you toy nerds, all you chumps. Cliff's out of here. <laughs>